first frost date is now only three weeks away, but there's still so much growing in the garden that it's a bit challenging to harvest it all. Today I'll share with you what we're harvesting in September here in Zone 5, as the end of the summer garden draws near. Let's start with tomatoes. We harvest tomatoes all the way up to the first frost, and at the moment they're ripening so quickly that we have to pick them frequently to prevent them from falling off the vine or being taken by squirrels. We've made a lot of tomato sauce and soup lately to use up the large surplus. We'll start dehydrating the surplus soon, so we'll be able to continue enjoying homegrown tomatoes into the fall and winter. We sure will miss the fresh ones though. We grow a number of sun living crops and containers in the front yard, including eggplants, peppers, and onions. Here's the recent harvest that includes a number of crops from the front yard, including poblano, Jimmy Dardello, and cayenne peppers along with an onion, two Japanese white egg eggplants, and oregano. The market more cucumber was the last one harvested this year. This picture shows some of the same crops from the front yard, plus four Japanese eggplants. The squash and tomatoes were grown in the backyard, and the zucchinis will probably be the last ones we harvest this year. This was also an excellent year for potatoes. We grew them in a couple garden beds and in several grow bags. We started harvesting them as needed for meals back in July. Earlier this month, we harvested the last of our purple Viking potatoes. We also picked the last of our purple Peruvian potatoes, which we've now been growing for a number of years. Other root crops, including carrots and beets, also did very well this year. We're still enjoying freshly picked Danver Half Long, Parisienne, and Cosmic Purple carrots and we'll be harvesting beets for several weeks to come. The most of our crops did very well. This was definitely not our best year for pumpkins and winter squash. Cool temperatures at the beginning of the summer effectively shortened our growing season, and record rainfall led to more problems with powdery mildew than we usually experience. Even so, we grew several sugar pie pumpkins, which will keep us in pumpkin pie through Thanksgiving and Christmas. We'll also make Ethiopian pumpkin stew, which is one of our favorite pumpkin recipes. And while we've grown massive Kushaw squash in the past, this year we managed to grow only one medium-sized Kushaw. These are great for Kushaw pie, which is very similar to pumpkin pie. Though our summer crops are starting to fade, our greens are still thriving, and will continue to do so several weeks after the first frost. We harvest kale almost daily. Our perennial greens are thriving. French sorrel and Good King Henry are coming back strong after retreating a bit during the warmer weather. Volunteer red vein sorrel is taking over our winter garden bed, so much so that I'll have to pull some of the plants to make room for other crops. Sea kale is producing massive leaves. And some of the tree collars we planted this year are already taller than me. Of all our greens, however, my favorite at this time of year is Swiss chard. They're beautiful to look at, nutritious, and they're hitting their peak just about now. Here is a recent harvest of Fort Hook Giant Swiss chard, Rainbow chard, and Perpetual spinach. They're growing so fast that it's a challenge to harvest them all. Finally, one of our favorite garden treats at this time of year is grapes. We have a steady supply of homegrown fruit during the growing season, starting with strawberries in June and ending with grapes in late summer and early fall. It'll be a long winter as we wait for our fresh fruit to return. So even as the summer garden winds down, there's still a lot growing in the garden. Soon I'll start work on our new walk-in hoop house, which will help us extend the growing season into the fall and winter. This winter I hope to continue to bring you gardening videos from within the relatively warm confines of the hoop house. Well, that's all for now. Thank you very much for watching. And until next time, remember, you can change the world one yard at a time. Of all of our greens, my favorite at this time of year is Swiss chard. They're beautiful to look at, nutritious, and they're hitting their peak just about now. 